And the next item of business is a motion on accelerated passage for the Department's Bill. Clerk, please read the motion. That the Department's Bill NIA 70 bar 11 to 16 proceed under the accelerated passage procedure. Junior Minister McCann. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg to move. The motion has been tabled in accordance with Standing Order 424 to seek Assembly approval to the Department's Bill proceeding under accelerated passage procedure. Accelerated passage is an exceptional procedure. It allows a bill to proceed without the normal committee stage. Um, and that less time than usual can elapse between Assembly stages. On Monday of last week, in advance of the Bill's introduction in the Assembly, Junior Minister Pengali and I attended a meeting of the Committee for OFM DFM, as is required by Standing Order 423. We had to explain the reasons why accelerated passage procedure is needed for this Bill, the consequences of it not being granted, and the steps taken to minimise its future use in relation to OFM DFM uh, Bills. I am pleased to say that the committee heard our explanations, questioned us and supported the proposal for accelerated passage procedures by majority vote. I wish now to explain those same issues to the Assembly and to seek member support for the use of the procedure for the Department's Bill. Reform of the structures of government here has been an issue for a long time. There was a commitment in the programme for government to agree changes to the structures which would apply in the next mandate. In 2012, the Assembly and Executive Review Committee produced a report on the reduction in the number of departments, which identified areas of commonality broadly comparable to what is now being proposed. The policy proposals underpinning the Bill were the subject of detailed consideration during the political process that led to the Stormont House Agreement in December last year. That agreement determined on a nine-department model to be established in time for the 2016 elections, with a future allocation of departmental functions to be agreed by the parties. The Executive discussed departmental restructuring on several occasions earlier this year and decided on the names and the responsibilities of the future departments. On 2 March 2015, the decisions which have been reached by the Executive on the new departmental structures in consequence of the Stormont House Agreement were announced in a statement by the First Minister to the Assembly. He set out a future model of nine departments with all the powers, functions and services of the current 12 departments. The allocation of responsibilities was further refined during the recent talks process. The purpose of the Department's Bill is to establish the framework of a new nine department structure. It renames seven departments and dissolves another three. It also makes necessary amendments to the Department's NI Order 1999, which provides the basis for the existing 12 department structure. I will now detail the reasons why accelerated passage is needed for the Department's Bill. Although it had been initially been hoped to introduce the bill at an earlier stage, it is only now, with the conclusion of the recent talks process and the publication of a fresh start, the Stormont House Agreement and Implementation Plan, that it has been possible for it to be brought forward. A fresh start reaffirmed the commitment to reduce the number of departments from 12 to 9 <coughs> pardon me, in time for the 2016 election and committed to having the bill introduced in, to, in the Assembly no later than the end of November 2015. It would, of course, been, have been preferable if the bill could have been introduced in time to move forward under the usual process. But as with the other Stormont House Agreement matters, progress on departmental restructuring only became possible following the conclusion of the talks process and the establishing of a new consensus with a fresh start three weeks ago. It is essential that the new structures are ready immediately following the 2016 Assembly election so that an executive can be formed on the nine department basis when the next assembly convenes. To achieve this, it will be necessary for the department's bill to complete its passage with sufficient assembly time left for a debate and an affirmative vote on the separate transfer of function order that is needed to allocate functions to departments. This additional order can only be made once there is legal certainty regarding the names of the future departments, and this can only be achieved if the Department's Bill completes its passage by February 2016. The consequences of accelerated passage not being granted are severe. If it was to fail to do so, it would mean that restructuring could not take place in 2016, and the incoming executive after the election would then be formed on the basis of the existing 12 department structure. It would be extremely difficult to achieve restructuring between elections without major disruption to the executive and the political institutions. These special circumstances have occasioned this exceptional request 
to the Assembly for the use of accelerated passage procedure. The commitment and a fresh start to a better way of doing business together should reduce the likelihood of such circumstances reoccurring and future use of accelerated passage by OFM DFM. A fresh start has provided a basis for addressing some of our most intractable issues in relation, sorry, intractable issues. In relation to departmental restructuring, it has made it possible for us to move forward, but the opportunity needs to be taken quickly, and we would ask members for their support to having the Department's bill progress by the accelerated passage procedure. Thank you. And I call the Deputy Chairperson of the Committee for OFM DFM, Mr Chris Little. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I could seek your indulgence very briefly to add my uh, tribute to outgoing MLA Pat Ramsey today. It's been a, a privilege and a, a pleasure to get to know Pat and to work with him uh, on the Employment and Learning Committee and on a number of all party groups in the Assembly, including Learning Disability. Uh, Pat was a uh, is a compassionate uh, and courageous MLA, and he's been a passionate advocate for some of the most uh, uh, at risk and, and vulnerable people in our community. So I want to extend my best wishes to him in, in his retirement on behalf of myself and the Alliance Party. Uh, in relation to the Department's uh, bill accelerated passage, uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise initially to speak on behalf of the Committee for the Office of the First Minister and Deputy First Minister as Deputy Chair of this Committee uh, on the motion that the bill proceed under accelerated passage procedure. The rationale for the request for accelerated passage has been set out today by Junior Minister McCann, along with the rationale for the bill. Junior Ministers did meet with the OFM-DFM Committee on Monday, the 30th of November, which fulfilled the requirements of Standing Order 42.3, that where it is thought a bill should proceed by the accelerated passage procedure, the minister or member in charge shall explain to the appropriate committee a. the reasons for accelerated passage, b. the consequences of accelerated passage not being granted, and, if appropriate, see any steps he or she has taken to minimise the future use of the accelerated passage procedure. The First Minister announced the decisions that had been reached by the Executive on the proposed new departmental structures to this Assembly on 2 March 2015. It is, in the opinion of the Committee, regrettable that it has taken nine months for the legislation to be introduced and that, as a consequence, it is unlikely that a full committee stage will be possible, subject to the outcome of the Assembly's agreement to this motion today. Junior Minister McCann has advised the OFM-DFM committee that it would have been uh, preferable if the bill had been introduced in time to complete the normal passage through the Assembly. However, has also explained that the bill does need to pass through all stages before the transfer of functions order which is the mechanism by which the functions and the detail of each department will be considered and introduced. It is the consideration of the transfer of functions order that will scrutinise the detail of the changes to departmental structures and functions, and without the use of the accelerated passage procedure for the department's bill, progress to the transfer of functions order and the new nine departmental structure would not be in place in time for the Assembly elections next year. Mr. Speaker, given that no functions of government are being removed and no policies terminated as a result of the planned restructuring of departments, the Committee agreed by ma majority to support the use of the accelerated passage procedure in relation to the Department's bill. Mr. Speaker, if I can very briefly, as an Alliance MLA for the Assembly, uh, say that we uh, support the reduction in the number of departments and will set out the rationale further in the second stage debate. Uh, the department's bill itself is a simple aspect of that process. The bill is relatively short and just names the new departments. Uh, in our opinion, the real scrutiny should fall on the transfer of functions order, uh, and the Alliance Party wants to ensure that all remaining available time can be focused around this with detailed discussions at the OFM-DFM Committee and on the floor of the Assembly. Therefore, support for the accelerated passage should not be misrepresented today as curtailing scrutiny. On the contrary, uh, it should be considered as doing so in order to maximise the opportunity for scrutiny where it matters, and the Alliance Party will certainly play 
a full role in this scrutiny in order to ensure that we devise as efficient an executive structure uh, that can deliver for everyone in Northern Ireland. Thank you. I call Mr Gordon Lyon. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. I welcome the opportunity to take part uh, in um, this uh, motion and I hope the debate that will follow uh, afterwards. We have a bill um, before us uh, today which um, I now believe has the support of, of people uh, and members from right across the House, but I understand that there is some concern uh, over um, giving it um, accelerated passage uh, today. Um, but I think that it is necessary for us to grant uh, accelerated passage if we want to see uh, the bill become law, which I think everybody here uh, does want to see happen. That wasn't always the case, uh, however. There was opposition. My party have been calling uh, for this for a long time, but there was opposition to it. But we now, uh, as a result of the Fresh Start Agreement, we now have that cross-community support that is necessary, and it's only now uh, that we can proceed. And that, we, we, we would have loved to have had this in. Uh, at the start of the mandate, and we would love to have had the opportunity to have the proper scrutiny that is required. But we are at a stage now where we have a choice in front of us, which is either to grant um, the bill accelerated passage uh, or not have uh, the bill at all. I understand that by not having um, that full committee stage that we uh, will have less, less scrutiny, but members will have the bill before them and they can see um, that it is uh, very, very simple. Really, all that the bill uh, is doing is changing the, name, uh, the names of the departments and reducing the departments from 12 to 9. And as Mr. Little has already said, the real work and the real scrutiny comes in whenever we're talking about the transfer of functions order, which uh, OFM, DFM have already said uh, that the committee will have time uh, to look at. And then the assembly will have to approve that as well. In addition, there will be the determination of ministerial offices and functions which will also be approved uh, by the uh, Assembly. But before any of that can happen, we need to make sure that this bill progresses uh, through all of its stages. It's very clear, uh, Mr. Speaker, that if we don't grant uh, accelerated passage to this bill today, that it is likely uh, that the bill uh, will fall. The junior ministers um, made that very clear, um, that it would not be able to be completed in time without accelerated uh, passage. And I believe that we should be giving it um, uh, accelerated passage because we should not uh, give up the opportunity to have this much needed uh, reform uh, of the assembly and of government departments uh, take place. We're all in the position where if, if um, uh, everything went to plan we would all obviously want to have that additional uh, committee stage but that's not possible. Uh, we have this choice to make and I think it's right that we move forward and we give it accelerated passage today. Uh, I support the motion and I would encourage other members to do the same. Thank you and I call Mr Chris Hazard. A bit. And just to follow on, I suppose, from, from previous speakers, and uh, I suppose I don't wish to add an awful lot and probably accelerate my own comments here today, that you know, we're all touching upon the same issues here, that re reform has been needed for, for quite a while and has been agreeable, I think, between the parties uh, for quite a while. We have had cross-party support for a reform of our departments and, and how we do this and to reduce down to the, the, to the nine models. I think as the, both the junior minister and the vice chair of the committee have outlined that uh, the real work will be around the transfer of functions order and the real scrutiny and the debate that will even today follow with the second stage, uh, of course, is to follow this. Um, but I just think is, it's important that we do um, have this piece of accelerated passage to allow us to get to, to a better place, I think, for departments. I think it's what the public want, it's what the parties want, um, and I support this accelerated passage here today. I think it is right, though, that we do touch upon the usage of accelerated passage uh, and that going forward that we do need to be careful on where we use it and, and how often that it is used. Uh, but certainly, for instance, here today, I'm more than happy to support accelerated passage. Gormagat. Call Mr. Alec Wood. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Speaker, and could I apologise that I was delayed upstairs at an event uh, when the uh, Deputy Chair of the uh, Committee spoke. Um, uh, taking up the last comment of Mr. Hazard, uh, it, it should be the operating principle of this chamber that when it, whether it is accelerated passage or any other vehicle that sidelines or goes around the good authority of the chamber, uh, that this chamber should caution itself against any such approach so that it is rarely used as opposed to routinely used. And unfortunately, Mr. 
uh, Speaker. Uh, we have had examples even in the last two or three weeks, and these might become uh, more examples in the coming two or three months of where the option of an accelerated mechanism, either through accelerated passage or through legislative consent motions, has become the practice or the attempted practice of some within this chamber. Uh, so whether it was the LCM proposal yesterday that was rightly defeated, or whether it was the LCM proposal uh, wrongly supported uh, in relation to um, welfare reform 2012 and 2015 versions, uh, or whether it is today's proposal for an accelerated passage of, of this particular uh, proposal, then we need to caution ourselves about going down that road in a routine right way rather than in a rare way. Because what we are doing is that we are degrading the character and content of devolution and the good authority of this House and the achievements of democratic struggle in this part of Ireland over many years that brought into life the institutions that we now uh, value. So we need to be cautious uh, about going down this particular road. And I know that that is broadly the view of all parties in this House, although that, that view has been uh, uh, challenged, in my view, over the last number of weeks by the option of accelerated mechanisms being preferred in relation to a number of matters in relation to the authority of this chamber, to the point, Mr. Speaker, that yesterday we have an accelerated mechanism that visits upon the people in Northern Ireland not just Welfare Reform 2012 version, but Welfare Reform 2015 version. We have that dilution and degrading of devolution, never mind the impact of all of that, referred to as a technicality. So, yes. Thank the member for giving way. Uh, would the member not accept, though, and I, I do accept his argument, and I mean, I'm certainly not a huge fan of accelerated passage either. However, on the 23rd of December 2014, the Stormont House Agreement was, to the best of everyone's knowledge in this House, agreed. However, that was reneged on. Now, had that agreement not been reneged on, which carried the original blueprint for the reduction in departments, then we would have had 18 months to scrutinise this, to go through it with a fine tooth comb, and to not then have to use the accelerated passage. Would the, would the member not accept that it is the result of some parties in this House reneging on an agreement that unfortunately has brought us to this position? Can I just advise that we need to return to the specific uh, discussion we're having this morning? Uh, if there's an issue with the explanation, the rationale that was set out by the junior minister for why in this particular instance, because I don't think we're dealing with uh, a generalised uh, drift towards accelerated passage, and I think, you know, I did allow you some scope to make that point, but I'm afraid now we're heading off in the wrong direction. We really do need to, uh, if you have an issue with the rationale that was provided f this morning in this particular instance, then I'd be glad to hear that. Otherwise, I think we'll have to kind of move the debate on and move it back to the subject matter. I thank the uh, speaker for that uh, intervention. Uh, uh, so to conclude, I just want to make two points. Um, one is, without detaining the House and not uh, getting into conflict with the speaker, um, one person's reneging on the agreement, so-called at Stormont House, is another person's honouring of the agreement at Stormont House. Has not that been the dispute over the last six and nine months that one person or one party's view is in many instances in, in uh, great tension and conflict with the view of other parties. Um, set, having said all that, Mr Deputy Speaker, and having cautioned myself and hopefully cautioned a few others of not routinely going down this road of accelerated mechanisms to deal with important business, given the character of the motion before us and given the opportunity that is going to arise with the transfer of functions order, and while acknowledging, as was said, that this is a very simple proposal, but one that has very significant consequences, taking all of that in the round, this is an occasion when uh, we will not dispute with the House 
that accelerated passage in relation to the motion before the Chamber is uh, appropriate and appropriate in these circumstances. And the Commissioner Andy Allen. Is party is opposed to accelerated passage for this measure. We fully support the principle that the, the number of executive departments should be reduced and that a number, the more streamlined administration should be able to deliver better government for the people of Northern Ireland. This bill should have been introduced earlier and been subject to proper debate and scrutiny. It is not as if this is some idea that has been plucked out of the air. A reduction in the number of assembly departments has been on the subject of discussion for quite literally years. In 2012, the Assembly Executive and Review Committee produced a report on the reduction in the number of departments that had identified areas of commonality, which, to quote Junior Minister Pangali, Pangali sorry, broadly comparable to what is now being proposed. Unquote. This then fed into the Stormont House Agreement process, which hit the buffers, and part of it was resurrected in the fresh start, bringing us to where we are today. In essence, it is the failure of the executive to get this matter agreed that has put us in the position we find ourselves today. This is not an insignificant bill. It may be small in terms of clauses, but is extremely far-reaching in terms of its impact. The Ulster Unionist Party has concerns that it has been introduced so late in the mandate and that the, the attempt to use accelerated passage means that it will not receive the attention it deserves or the scrutiny it merits. Indeed, when junior minister, the junior ministers appeared before the committee on the 30th of, of November, junior minister McCann replied to the vice chair, quote, to be honest, I understand your concerns about accelerated passage. I fully understand the concerns that you have, that the committee will not be given enough time to scrutinize the bill. Unquote. The simple fact is that we are not arguing against the rationale for going from 12 to nine departments. We do, however, have an, an issue with accelerated passage. I won't, I'm just finishing up here, sorry. Uh, we are, after all, members of the Legislative Assembly. The clue is in the title. Our job is to legislate, and that includes a proper scrutiny function. Mr. Speaker, I oppose accelerated passage. And I call Mr. Jim Allis. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, there's one reason and one reason only why this motion is before us today. And it's because of the dysfunctional failure of this executive to progress its program. Because as has been pointed out, it was nine months ago, the 2nd of March, that the First Minister trumpeted the fact that there was agreement to reduce from uh, down to nine departments. Those nine months have been lost and wasted. And now, the guilt of that is to be put upon us all. We're all meant to feel responsible for that dysfunctional failure of this failing executive and to rescue them by uh, abrogating the normal processes and proceeding to accelerated passage. That's what is being asked of us. Uh, and I must say, I feel no guilt for the failure of this executive, uh, and nor do I feel inclined to share it. Uh, it is a failure of its own making. And of course, the same executive, what was it, three, four years ago, we had the pantomime about the Department of, Edu uh, of uh, uh, Dell. It was going to be abolished. And that, all, of course, just melted away. And then, as I say, say, nine months ago, we had the great breakthrough of nine departments, and then nothing, until today, when we're told with super haste, we must do it to make up for the abysmal, dysfunctional failure of this executive. I don't think that's a, a, an appeal which I want to respond to, uh, because it only confirms to that executive that failure can, is acceptable and they can go on failing as undoubtedly they will. And I call Mr. John McAllister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, 
I think when we look at what we've been asked to do today on Accelerated Passage, and as colleagues have set out um, the history of this, and I remember in May 2011, it had been discussed about Dale going, and then it was going to be that October, and then it was going to be um, the, the following uh, March at the end of the financial year was the best time to do it, and Minister Farry didn't know how long he would get to be minister. And the main debate around that ended up was the injustice about the Alliance having two ministries rather than, than was, it, was it fit for purpose, what was the model going to be. So, and suddenly today we're now faced with accelerated passage. So we have a deal then by the end of uh, December, 23rd of December, almost a year ago. Uh, we know what the nine departments are looking like. They are announced, uh, uh, and actually, to, to be fair to the executive and those that run them up, look uh, on the face of it reasonably sensible changes. But announced on the 2nd of March, and no legislation progressed. And this argument, Mr. Speaker, that, oh, well, then there was political disagreement around it, that didn't stop us continuing to make the the argument about welfare reform didn't stop uh, ministers bringing forward a budget that was based on the Stormont House Agreement. It didn't stop all of those things happening. And now we're being asked to put through, yes, some might say a, sim a relatively simple bill or, or not as contentious, but it does have far-reaching consequences and it goes to the very heart of the way this executive works the way this executive treats the legislative uh, arm here, because we get uh, uh, you know, legislative consent motions, one yesterday that was defeated. We did our entire welfare reform via a legislative consent motion, which seemed uh, a most bizarre way of dealing with it and building in uh, mitigation measures. And now we've been asked to accelerate uh, this bill. This is not the way that we should be doing our business. Other, other, in a second, other bills are going through this place um, in the normal process. We could have had this bill uh, even, even one month ago, even two months ago. There was nothing to stop uh, um, that. Even it had been ready immediately after the fresh start. I will give way to. I thank the member for giving way. Uh, Mr. Allen, Mr. Alistair and Mr. McAllister have used uh, the vast majority of their time to raise concerns that I would share, but none of them have mentioned any specific concerns about the actual bill or the issues that they would like to raise through a more extended scrutiny process. So I'd ask Mr. McAllister, are there particular issues in the bill that he thinks there is more time that is needed to scrutinise, given how simple the bill actually is. You have accelerated passage, uh, and so you do have to confine your comments in that respect to that subject matter. If you take issue with the explanation that was provided by the junior minister, then you've got something to, uh, you know, to discuss. But let's not uh, go into the old kind of uh, generality of the, uh, the rationale behind introducing the bill in the first place. And Mr. Speaker, um, I was about to remind the member of your, your earlier ruling and guidance uh, on this, and I certainly will take up Mr. Little in the later debate uh, on, those, on those issues. His earlier comments about, because it's simple, we're almost going to accelerate it to improve the scrutiny, process, it actually would suggest then why don't we accelerate every bill? But surely part of the fallout from accelerated passage is that there isn't the normal committee stage uh, whereby there could be an informed debate about whether nine departments is the right number or not. Maybe there's an argument for six, seven. We used to be governed with six. But once we adopt the accelerated passage, we de facto conclude the argument about whether or not it is nine, with no other options. We discuss that aspect now. We're talking about accelerated passage or not. 
Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I, I will desist uh, from it uh, until the later, uh, until the later debate. And I think there are good points uh, for the, the uh, coming de uh, debate. But those are the reasons that I'm against uh, the executive arm of our government using the legislative branch uh, as some sort of rubber stamp to get its business through. This is not the way. Uh, it does not lead to. Uh, good legislation and does not make ex an executive or assembly look functional when we desperately need public confidence in our executive and our assembly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. And I call Junior Minister McCann to conclude and wind on the debate. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, and I'm grateful for members' contrib con contributions to this debate. The decisions taken by the executive on restructuring will result in the most extensive reorganisation of the departmental system since 1999. A reduction to nine departments will lead to a leaner, more streamlined and efficient administration. It will provide for more joint-up government with a greater cohesion, both within and between departments. It will eliminate layers of unnecessary bureaucracy. There will be greater scope to align functions, to move beyond the silo mentality, to find better ways of achieving our objectives and to improve services to the public. The introduction last week of the Department's Bill in the Assembly marked an important first step in establishing the legislative basis for departmental restructuring. The Bill will provide the framework for a future nine-part department structure. In due course, a transfer of functions order will make a detailed provision for the movement of statutory responsibilities between departments. It will be subject to committee scrutiny and draft, and any committee suggestions for improvement will be given due weight in finalising the order. That order will then have to be approved in its final form by affirmative resolution of the Assembly. However, it can only be made in its final form when there is a legal certainty regarding the number and names of the future departments. This can only be achieved if the Department's Bill completes its passage by February 2016. If the Bill misses that target, it would mean that restructuring could not take place in 2016 and the incoming executive after the election would be formed on the basis of the existing 12 department structure. Given the difficulties of restructuring an executive and departments between elections, it might be years before the opportunity occurs. And at this late stage in the current mandate, and given the need for additional steps in the Assembly after the bill has cleared final stage, there is no alternative to accelerated passage if restructuring is to be achieved in time for the 2016 election. As I have already indicated, we would have preferred if the bill have been brought forward in time for it to proceed under the usual processes for Assembly bills. However, its introduction only became possible with the conclusion of the recent talks process and publication of a fresh start the Stormont House Agreement and Implementation Plan on 17 November 2015. A fresh start committed to the introduction of the bill in the Assembly no later than the end of November 2015, and no time has been wasted in ensuring that target was achieved. The First Minister and the Deputy First Minister immediately obtained executive agreement to seek an Assembly approval to accelerate a passage. We briefed a special meeting of the Committee of OFMDFM on 30 November, securing the Committee's support. The Bill was introduced immediately after that meeting, and this demonstrates the priority we attach to this Bill. And really, just um, picking up on some of the, the issues raised by uh, some of the members today, um, I want to thank Chris Little, the Vice Chair. Um, he obviously, uh, first of all, recognised the reasons um, in taking the bill forward by accelerated passage, and also mentioned about you know having a longer, more de uh, a better debate in terms of the transfer of functions order, which um, will be here in February uh, of next year. Um, Gordon Lyons, Chris Hazard, and Ali Gatwood basically um, reiterated that while you know they, they would have preferred that it wasn't uh, used, accelerated passage wouldn't be used. They actually um, you know, uh, accepted the reasons, uh, particularly Chris Hazard and Gordon Lyons, as to why we are using accelerated passage. Andrew Allen, I mean, I know he quoted part of what I said to, to the committee's vice chair last week, but if he, if he had it went on to finish the quote, it would have uh, said actually that the reason we were doing this was that both uh, Junior Minister Pengali and myself both uh, recognised the concerns of, of the committee and the concerns of uh, obviously other members in this chamber, but this is totally in terms of, of a time constraint. Um, Jim Allister obviously used the debate um, to use his uh, uh, usual speech about the dysfunctionality of the executive, and John McAllister rehashed that a bit. But just to say to members, I want to thank members uh, to, for their, their contributions today. I'd like to um, 
to say that, that really, as with the Stormont House Agreement matters, the conclusion of a fresh start has provided the basis for progressing this important legislation. The provision for good government through streamlined and efficient administration, improved opportunities for policy development, savings on all necessary bureaucracy, delivering better services to the public. These will be the ultimate outcomes of the Department's bill, but we must move quickly if we are to grasp the opportunity to have restructuring in place when the new Assembly meets in May 2016. This requires accelerated passage of the Department's bill. Therefore, I ask the Assembly to approve this motion. Thank you. Before we proceed to the question, I would remind members that this motion requires cross-community support. The question is that the motion standing on the order paper be agreed. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. no. Aye. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. And uh, I am satisfied that whilst there uh, was, there was a, 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 a vote no, I am satisfied that there is support from all sides of the House.